Everyone, welcome. It's just good to see you guys. We are in the book of Proverbs and we're going through the book of Proverbs verse by verse and chapter by chapter. Today we'll be in Proverbs chapter four. And we're gonna hear some themes that are, it almost sounds redundant, but sometimes in being repetitive, it's just, hey, would you listen if I have to tell you this multiple times? And so Proverbs four, if you have your Bibles out, let's read this. I'm not gonna take long. These aren't long sessions at all, 15, 20 minutes. But good to see you guys and good to have you with us. Proverbs 4 is going to start off. Hear my children the instructions of a father and give attention to no understanding. And so we're going to see this theme about fathers and mothers listening, uh, teaching their children about what wisdom is. Now, that might be a paradigm shift for us because I, I think a lot of us in the West have been conditioned by, well, we take them to church, we take them to youth group, we take them to Sunday school. That is like one hour, hour and a half, two hours a week out of all the hours of the week. And they might get 20 minutes of Bible. And so in a culture like ours today, really is our responsibility as parents to train up the child in the way they should go. Hey, that's that's a proverb, right? Proverbs chapter three, we're in last week. Lean not on our own understanding on all our ways. Acknowledge him. It'll make our path straight. And we have a lot of teaching and a lot of cultural influences today that are so contrary to the word of God. And that's our responsibility. So if you're parent out there, God bless you. If you're not, God bless you. So hear the instructions of the father and give attention to no understanding. Pay attention. Listen up. You ever get that? Like, hey, are you listening? And so don't just pass by this. Pay attention that you would get understanding. For I give you good doctrine do not forsake my law when I, uh, verse two. And so good doctrine, we have bad doctrine, good doctrine is the assumption on that, right? Bad doctrine, not based in the word of God, but good doctrine is solid and the effects of it will give you good fruit in your life. Do not forsake my law, verse three. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one inside of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. So now we're seeing a, a grown son or daughter going, I remember the teachings of my parents. That's that's well done, good, good parents, right? Let your heart return to my words, uh, keep my commandments and live. So that beckoning, like I remember this, I need to return back to this. Good reminder for all of us. It's just so easy to be out of the word rather than into the word. So in being into the word requires discipline and discipline can be defined as doing the thing that no one else wants to do to have the results that no one else has. That's discipline. And so the son is re reminding of those words and getting an understanding. Um, get wisdom, get understanding. Verse five, don't forget my, nor turn away from the words of my, uh, of my mouth get wisdom so it's almost like a a call to us if you don't have it get it go out to the store now right go out we're out of this get it it's a sense of urgency get wisdom get it make sure you have it and understanding so that you know how to apply wisdom to your life wisdom and understanding wisdom is what to do understanding is how do i apply this into my life verse six is substantial do not forsake her and she will preserve you love her and she will keep you so don't forsake her meaning man i should have done this but i didn't don't forsake her and as you apply it to your life you have it on your radar it's on your you know what i mean by your radar it's like what are you thinking it's in your thought life you're applying it it will preserve life verse seven wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and all you're getting, get understanding. Sounds redundant, but he wants to say it's, it's your number one. If you do this, let it be your number one. Let wisdom be your number one. So there's a sense of urgency from Solomon to the reader that you would get this and you get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you, verse eight. Uh, and she will bring you honor when you embrace her. So exalt her, like I'm bringing this to a place of importance. I'm going to pr bring it up so I can see it. I'm going to exalt it and she will promote you, meaning that and give you favor as you have wisdom in your life and you apply it to your life. It's a discipline. 
uh, it's like lifting weights. If you've ever worked out and you start to work out and you're sore a little bit and you're wondering, is this doing anything? But months later, you see the results. Same applies with wisdom. As you start applying it, you will see results. You will have favor and she, and she will get uh, promote you. Verse 9, she will place you on your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory she will deliver to you. So as you apply this, you're going to get promoted and people will recognize that. A, a crown that's has to do with authority and God will give you authority. Uh, verse 10, hear my son and receive my sayings. Now I want you to listen to that. Receive my sayings. Like I'm embracing this. You're, I'm welcoming you. I'm receiving these sayings into my life, and the years of what uh, and the year and years of your life will be many. Verse eleven. I've taught you in my way of wisdom. I've led you in right paths. That's what wisdom does. If there's right paths, there are wrong paths, and wisdom is able to discern a right path and a wrong path. Uh, when you uh, when you walk, your steps will be not be hindered and you will run and you will not stumble. And so as you do this, as you start to, to get busy and start to do this, you'll walk, you'll not stumble, you'll run. Take hold of instructions and do not let go. Keep her for she is your life. Keep hold of this, hold on to this. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of the evil. There's a path of righteousness and there's a path of evil. Our culture today has laid down some paths of evil that we want to make normative. Now, we being followers of Jesus and students of his word should be like, hey, the paths that culture is trying to let my kids down are not godly paths. Right? So avoid it. Verse 15, avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. They do not sleep talking about the evil unless they've done evil. Their sleep is taken away unless they may make somebody fall. So they get rejoicing when they get others involved into the sin that they're involved with. That's their goal. For they eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence. Verse 18, but the path of the just, like the shining sun, shall shine ever brighter into, unto the perfect day. Now the path of the righteous, like the rising sun. So it's winter in some places it's cold cold and dark but when the sun comes out it starts to warm things and as it increases there's greater warmth there's greater clarity that's the path of the righteous as you make a decision in your life i'm going to follow the path of righteousness dark and cold but as you continue into it it's like the rising sun you'll see its effects uh verse 19 the day of the wicked is like darkness they do not know what makes them stumble they, they, why did this happen? They don't know because they're not. Well, they're walking in darkness. Ever walked in darkness? I've done this so many times. Get out of bed and stub my toe. Why? Couldn't see, right? So these are ways so you don't stub your toes in your life. Verse 20, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. So here we are again and again. Pay attention. Listen. Put these on your heart. Uh, don't let them depart, verse 22, for they are alive to those who find them. So I want you to listen to this. You, you can find wisdom. You have to look for it. And when you find it, it's a blessing in your life. You're looking for it. You're finding it. And health to all their flesh, verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Now, that's our personal responsibility to keep our own hearts. Not others' hearts, but to keep our own hearts so the responsibility of wisdom is for us to be looking in our hearts, us applying it. And as we do, promotion happens. He said this multiple times. Keep your hearts. Put away from you deceitful mouth. Put perverse lips far from you. Verse 25. And let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Now, that I used to be a runner. And, uh, and so running a race, I'd, always, I'd be so fixated with the race. Paul says, run the race in such a way as to win the prize. When you're running a race, you're not looking at the stands. You're not looking anyplace else, but you're looking and directed at the finish line. So put your eyes to this. Put your eyes to wisdom. Don't look around because there is so much darkness in the world today 
that is not giving you biblical godly wisdom. We're in a polarization between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. So if you are saturating yourself with culture, it's not godly today. So don't be looking at culture going, well, we need to love everybody, make every, no, that's, that's not it. You need to be loving God, loving people, and loving people has nothing to do with appeasing people. Big difference. Ponder the path, verse 26, of your feet and let all your ways be established. So think about, ponder, think about what you're doing. Look inward in your life and be real with yourself. Am I on this godly path? Are there things in my life that I need to eliminate in my life that are not godly? And if so, eliminate them. It's that simple. And verse 27, do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. So he's encouraging us today in Proverbs chapter 4 to evaluate our lives. Keep on the path of righteousness. If you've stumbled anyway, thank you, Jesus. we got a God that you can come back to. And there's forgiveness and restoration and reconciliation. So I love you guys. We'll be in Proverbs chapter five next week. I love praying for people at the end. So let me pray for you today. And I'm going to pray what I feel like I'm hearing the Lord say. Normative New Testament Christianity, John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. But I'm going to pray over a woman who's out there right now. You have felt discouraged. Uh, you felt hopeless. You feel like God doesn't hear your prayers. And I want to let you know the Lord hears your prayers. I want to let you know that he pays attention. I want to let you know that uh, that those children that you have, in particular, I, I feel like there's a woman out here and you're praying for your daughter. She's gone astray. She's gotten off the paths of righteousness. But she once knew the Lord. And so I'm joining with you right now to say, let your daughter serve the Lord, repent, make a turn back to him, and let this be the time and the season that it does. Hey, I love you guys. I, I, we're at Pastor Nick at the branch. We're in Cary, North Carolina. Our service times are 6.30 on Saturdays. Love to see you there. God bless you. And I pray that his wisdom guides you this week. Be encouraged. Bye-bye.